To start off, we're gonna take off this top cover. You can use the included key that came with the Nook or you can use your iFixit toolkit. In this case, I'll use my iFixit toolkit. This is how it looks like. After taking off the top cover, we are going to unscrew this one screw right here, which will allow us to take off this RGB slash metal plate. Just like that. Careful not to break the RGB connector. Right after, we are going to take, disconnect this right here. This should just pull up, wiggle and pull up, just like that. Now we have the top cover slash RGB cover off. So after taking that cover off, we have the motherboard. We have our NVMe drives. I have two running a RAID 0, and I have two sticks of RAM, eight gigs each, running at 3000 megahertz. Now, now that we're at the motherboard, we're going to disconnect these two fan headers and this harness thing that goes to the front IO. After disconnecting these, we are going to unscrew this one, two, three, four screws and the four backplate screws. All right, now we are going to unscrew this one, two, three, four bracket screws. the bracket off to the side. There's also one more screw right here. And you are supposed to take off these two NVMe drives depending if you have one or two and disconnect the Wi-Fi card right under. Here's the NVMe drives. Now you're going to use one of these to unscrew the Wi-Fi card. This is how the screw looks looks like. And now take your spudger or a flathead and just pop these off. You might be able to even do it with your fingernails. There you go. Here, before taking out the motherboard, you are supposed to take this plastic piece that wraps all the way around 
sort of snap it off, pop it off. As you can see, I created some space in between. And go around all the edges and lift it up a little bit. If you have a knife fix it toolkit, this will help you. Here's the plastic piece. Now the motherboard lifts up and slides towards you, revealing most likely the very, very badly applied thermal paste and some thermal pads. Here you can see how, how crusty this old thermal paste is not in the best shape whatsoever so now we're going to put the motherboard to the side best way to lift up this heatsink is to get it to grab it by these two holes and just like that you should be able to easily lift it up revealing all the dust that has been accumulating over the usage of the computer. We are going to put that off to the side. And now we are going to work on these two fans. Each fan has three screws. We are going to start unscrewing. Out comes one fan, we can see pretty dusty. Here one of the antennas is taped to the fan, you could just either untape it or rip through it. I'm going to try and untape it to preserve the tape for when I'm going to reassemble it. Now that the fans are cleaned up, we are going to install them back into place. We are going to screw these three Phillips screws back into the fan and the housing. And go ahead and repeat the same process for the second fan. Next up, we have to clean the heatsink. Grab a few Q-tips and cotton pads or cotton balls. Also, 70% or higher isopropyl alcohol. The higher the percentage, the better. And just start cleaning off the thermal paste. After cleaning the heatsink, we are going to put it back into place. 
make sure none of the connectors get stuck under. And there you go. Now we put this off to the side and move over to our motherboard. Same process, we have to clean the thermal paste. You can still use isopropyl alcohol and Q-tips. Now we are going to reapply the thermal paste. Now that we've reapplied the thermal paste, we are ready to put the motherboard back into the frame. So look for the front I.O. on the motherboard and line it up with the, with the front of the frame. Flip the motherboard around and slide the back portion first. Make sure the antenna cables are not getting caught under the motherboard as you're putting the motherboard in. And slowly but surely let it sit in. Just like that. Now we're going to grab our bracket and screw it back in. Screw all of these screws diagonally. So for example, you're gonna go one, two, three, four, kind of in a star pattern. And grab this one screw that was holding the motherboard in place that sits right under the bracket. like that we have a stable motherboard it's got nowhere to go now we can get this plastic piece that we took off earlier and put it around the edges make sure no cables get caught up in between Just like that, we just need to get the front I.O. aligned. If the front I.O. doesn't go in first try, try pulling on it just like such and pushing it down until you hear a click. Now we're going to screw in our network card, slide it into the slot as such. get this little screw right here and plug in the very very small connectors this might be hard since they're insanely small, but with some patience you'll get there. Now that we have the network card in, we are going to take our two storage NVMEs, slide them into the slot. Now 
just like that. Now we're going to screw them in. Now that the NVMe drives are in, we're going to plug in the fans. There's one on the right side of the motherboard. One on the left side right here. And this harness, this cable harness. We just, which just slides in as such. All there's left to do is to screw in these four screws in the four corners, one here, 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 and here, and put the RGB cover on. Now that every screw on the motherboard is screwed in, the motherboard is stable, we're going to grab the RGB top plate and grab this little connector. Grab this little connector right here and make sure to plug it in into here. Now that you plug that in, I'm going to slowly let down. And align this top plate back into place. Just like that. And screw in the last screw. Now that we got everything else assembled, we're just going to get the top plate, put it in place, and screw it in. And we're done. 